incubators. So, you know, there's more to an incubator than just when semen power right off the bat. And the, and the one mistake you really can get in trouble with, you've got to remember that incubators, they serve a great purpose, but they can, you can get you in trouble with an incubator too. So, um, just to kind of give you kind of a brief outline, to what's an incubator? Well, it's an enclosed space that you can control the temperature in. So that you can then maybe add oxygen or, or things for breathing, but primarily um, you can add heat. Remember, you cannot cool in an incubator, and that can get you in trouble. We're going to talk about that here in a moment. So there's there's really a number of different ways that incubators are built. But, but in, in all cases, basically what you've got is a box. And in that box, you might have, uh, some of them have a fan. So a typical way of doing this is to have a fan uh, that then blows air into the chamber. And you might have a uh, kind of a gut here that, that pulls air in. So basically air is coming back in, flowing around. And then you have some kind of a heat source in here, a very common way of doing this and an inexpensive way of doing this is to simply put a, a light bulb in there. Put a light bulb in there. Put in the light bulb. And the, hot, the air passes through the light bulb, across the light bulb, blown back into the container. And then you have some kind of a temperature sensor in here. So we'll have a temperature sensor in here. Um, and that basically goes to some electronics. And with that, it controls the light bulb in the back. All right, straight away. All right. And then, of course, it's going to be something with a lid on the top. And there's a lot of incubators out there that work exactly that way. And that's fine. I, I, there's a couple of things I don't like about that. Uh, that is, is that you've got this fan that can get plugged up with hair and things from a puppy or dirt and dirt. And uh, the light bulb itself can, can uh, if you drop the whole thing, the light bulb can get damaged and not work and then you're in trouble. But that's okay. So then what you have, of course, is you know, your puppies would sit in here and and with this kind of a system, you are, you are controlling the temperature of the air inside. So what you're doing here is, is this space here, you're controlling the air temperature. So that you're controlling the air temperature. And it's important to realize the difference between different techniques, but that controls the air So remember here, air temperature, that you can go put a thermometer inside this, and it should be the same as what's on the display. And what temperature are you going to set this to? I don't know because I don't manufacture that kind of a, of a incubator, but it's going to be something around you know, 85, 90 degrees. That's just a guess. You've got to go look at the instructions of your particular incubator so that you get that right. Okay. And certainly one can just go ahead if you want to. And you can put a thermometer in here. And that thermometer should be the air temperature, which should be the same as what's written on this thing. So if that means 85, you expect this thing to come up with 85. Good. Straightforward. Nothing wrong with that. Alright, okay. So now another way of doing this is that rather than heating the air temperature up, um, you have a light bulb inside the container. And that is just doing a horrible job. She does the window act quite well. Okay. Okay. Sorry about the smudges there. All right, so the next idea would be, and people who may be constructing a home might build on this way. <clears throat> the very first ones I built 15 years ago were built this way. So now you have the container again, and the lid on, and you have a light bulb in here. And you can control that again. Now you've got a, you've got a thermometer, and you've got some electronics, that controls this whole loop. So now this light bulb radiates here. <clears throat> and um, not crazy about that because now you definitely have got places that are hotter and colder. A puppy that's here is closer to this, different than a puppy that's over here. So it's hard to really control the temperature in that. And for that reason, I really don't like that as a solution. Um, a, a, another, so, another way of doing this is you know, this. And I built some like this when I was first investigating ways to do things. You had a floor, and you stuck a light bulb down here. There's your light bulb. 
And then you have the temperature sensor in here, again, with some electronics to control that. Now, this gives you a slightly more, you know, rather than having radiated light, it generally heats up the whole, whole floor. And some areas of the floor are going to be hotter than others. I prefer that. Okay, so that's fine. So now we're going to talk about the way we build it, and then we're going to talk about differences. So the way we build this is that we have an insulated container. Here's one right here. Insulated container with a thermostat in it. And what that has, you can't even see that, sorry. What we use is an insulated container that has a thermostat and you can see the temperature. And then it has a heat plate that's installed in the floor. That's for a large incubator. We've got one for a small incubator. So we manufacture this. Basically, it's an aluminum sheet with some copper etched on it with lots and 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 lots of wires. You can probably see them there if I get close. The vent's powered by 12 volts and powered by a thermostat with a thermometer that's right on this plate. Okay, so how does that work? So now what we have is we have a gaming container our container and we put a lid on it which on the looks to be like that because that's what it looks like and it's hinged glass is hinged things over and then what we have is we this thing whole thing is now insulated so there's an inner wall which is insulated and then we have a heat plate There's a heat plate that's right on the floor. Right on the floor like that. And then, like in the other system, there's got to be some way of controlling it. So there's going to be a thermometer, and actually it's a thermistor, that goes here, that goes to some electronics, and then comes back and then feeds this heater, whether it's on or off. Okay, so <clears throat> this has a heating air up, and this is the important part here. This is not heating air up. It is heating puppies up through conduction from the floor to the puppies. So a puppy, it's, it's, like, it's like you laying on a, um, a heated pad. So a heated pad would not heat you up by the air. If you go put a thermometer in here and try to measure the temperature of the air, you're going to come up with a number that's significantly less than what you expect to see. Because we set this thing at like 38 degrees centigrade, which is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what we said. That sounds hot. But remember, puppy's temperature is around 100 degrees. So if you're going to warm a puppy up, you've got to put them on something that's warmer than they are. Consequently, that's why that's the case. So the puppy gets heat. So the puppy's sitting here. Here's the puppy. And the puppy gets heat because it's in contact with a warmer surface than it is. And so heat comes up through here. Like that. And here's the puppy. So rather a different technique. Now why do I like this? Why do we do this? Well the first off is there's no moving parts. There are no fans, there are no light bulbs. You can drop this thing and it keeps on working. It's not going to be surprised when all of a sudden it's not working. There's nothing. It's all what we call solid state. No moving parts. Now the whole inside of this thing is completely isolated from the outside world, which means that you can put bleach in here and clean it out. That's another great point. And then another part about this is this whole thing with our system runs on 12 volts. So you can now plug this into your wall outlet with an adapter. It runs on 110 or 220 volts. Or you can get rid of that and you can plug in with a cigarette lighter in your car. So now it's too portable. And most of the systems out there are not because they run on 110 or 220 volts. So this will run on 220, and then on 110 it runs on 12 Great, all right, so, that's, so now, now I, want, I want to point out some important points about what is going on here. You've got to remember that in all incubators, not just this, but every incubator that you buy, they do not cool down. All they can do is add heat. I mean, there may be some out there, high-end stuff that's in hospitals for infants, maybe those kind of things can, can cool down, but, but pretty much everything you're going to buy Let's open this way, this camera up. Everything that you buy for a uh, um, for um, um, uh, puppies, kittens, budgery bars, squirrels, parakeets, and all these systems are used for lots of animals at zoos, they don't cool down. 
So that can get you into a problem, and that's why you need to pay attention, because if it's a hot day outside, and you've got a lot of radiating energy coming in here, coming in here, it's putting heat into this thing, you can potentially get this inside the box too hot. The thermostat won't tell you that, because the thermostat is right on the heat plane, and the heat plane is not getting any hotter. It's the air space that's getting hotter. If you've got a lot of puppies in here, they are also generating heat too, and they can raise the temperature. So our general advice is, is if you've got one of our larger incubators with a lot of puppies in it, you may want to crack the lid open, and you certainly, whatever incubator you use, you want to check on your puppies, especially when you first put them in and they've been in there for 30 minutes, to make sure they're not getting too hot. So what are the symptoms of everything's fine and dandy and everybody's happy? Puppies are fast asleep, they're not crying, they're not hardly moving, they're just spread out on the floor and they're just doing great. Puppies have got their mouths open, they're panting, got a tongue hanging out, they're too hot. Turn the temperature down, crank a little bit. If the puppies are really sweaty, what's going on there? Well, there are vents in most incubators, including ours, there's a vent in here. So there's a couple of vents that let air out, it's great. But when puppies are in here, lots of them, they're breathing, and, and just like you, if I put you into a very small enclosure, you would breathe out vapor air or water molecules and you would end up being sweaty so that's not a good situation so if you find the puppies are clammy crack them in that's it sort that problem out so remember whatever you do doesn't matter whether it's our incubator or somebody else's check the puppies every now and then to make sure that they are not overheating <laughs> don't start sweating profusely don't have really moist coats if they do open the lid up but if they're asleep and quiet, you've got it set right. All right, so now let's talk about other things you might want to add on. So, um, oxygen. Oxygen is, you know, you've got an incubator, you've got an incubator for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons you've got an incubator is because you're transporting puppies to and from the vet. Our product's portable, you're riding in a car, right, perfect, not a problem. Um, but you've got a sick puppy. You've got a puppy that's got to stay in the incubator for some time. Maybe it's a small, weak puppy, maybe it's a premature puppy, or maybe it's a puppy that's having problems breathing. And how do you know that a puppy's having problems breathing? Because it'll be going, <laughs> puppies that are breathing like that, they're getting fast, sudden jerks in their stomach, <laughs> making all squeaking noises. <laughs> those are puppies that probably need oxygen. Puppies that are getting blue in the face, blue in the tongue, blue in the, blue in the lips. Those puppies definitely need oxygen. So what do we do in a situation like that? Well, in our incubator, and probably most others as well, you can either run a tube inside for the lid, or with ours, you can just simply, there's lots of places you can put a hole through this, and you can then get your oxygen tube, let's see if I can find a green thing. So here's your oxygen machine. It's plugged into 110, 110, 120, whatever. And there's a tube that goes in there, and that is producing pure oxygen, or at least close to pure oxygen. So what we like to do, you've got a lot of puppies in there, and by the way, you don't need to use oxygen unless you've got puppies that are in trouble. There's no need for oxygen. I mean, we wouldn't, you know, but if you've got a puppy in trouble, then this is what we like to do. We take a plastic cup, and we put a hole in the bottom of it. There's the cup, there's the edge of the cup. And we pass that tube through here into the cup. And then we take the puppy, and we put, we put the puppy physically so it's head, is sitting inside this no terrible picture of a puppy. <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> my cat's a cat's a ghost. But that is a puppy, hopefully a live puppy. But the whole point here is now you're enveloping that puppy in absolute pure oxygen. So you can turn your oxygen concentrator down to the lowest setting. All these oxygen concentrators that you buy, they're set up for humans, and they'll go up to five, six, seven liters a, mi a minute. They don't need anything close to that. I mean, that's what I might need if I was in trouble as a 200 pound man. But a, a one pound puppy doesn't need like, you know, 1% of that. So set it down to the lowest setting because you will get the most best this oxygen concentration, typically around 95, 97%. So only oxygen concentrate down to the lowest setting. It's typically one liter a minute. Set it down to that setting right there. And then if you can, you've got a single puppy, Go ahead, put a cup in there, get the puppy's head in it, and that will really, that really gets that puppy, 
be covered in, in, in a nice dosage of oxygen. Um, okay, so I've really prattled on about that. I've talked about R's a lot, but it's not to say, I mean, the things I like about R's is, is they're almost foolproof. I mean, you can drop them, you can smash them. They're super portable. They are totally enough. There's a little light inside, by the way, which, so you can uh, physically you know, see what's going on inside the box. So stick them. Uh, they can run on uh, both uh, 110 and, and, uh, and 12 volt car, and they're pretty inexpensive. I mean, the price on a small one's a little over 300 bucks, and I think you're hard find to pervert, provide a, per, uh, per, find a, a you know, commercial incubator that comes close to that in price with all those features. Um, but, but the takeaway on this is be very careful about making sure that your puppies don't get too hot because they can. And the only way that you can control that is to over the lid, turn the temperature down. And that's something that can happen if you've got really hot weather or you've got a lot of puppies inside here. So this small unit, as far as Frenchers are concerned, I've had 10 uh, newborn Frenchers in here. They're packed in, they're pretty good, but they've got room to move around, but I'll just go to sleep. And I mean, when I go home, I put it on the central console of the car, plug it into my cigarette lighter, and then I monitor it every 10, 15 minutes and just make sure that everybody's quiet. I mean, if somebody's starting to make some noise in there, that's time to open it up and see what's going on. If it's been very quiet for the last 20 minutes, that's another reason to open up and make sure everybody's okay. But yeah, one last thing I want to add on the end here is remember that uh, uh, the temperature control that you see on an incubator is not going to be perfect. You're not going to set the thing for 95 degrees and see it stick right on 95 degrees. It's likely going to do some moving around. If you think about it this way in your house, your thermostat on the wall measures the temperature right there at the thermostat. To cool the house down, it's got to turn on a fan or a heater, uh, you know, or a cooling element or a heating element and run a fan and then circulate that air around. So these things in the thermostats in your house have what's called a very slow lag time. They take quite some time to monitor difference in temperature. So you think you're getting a pretty static temperature, but in fact it's really doing this. With most thermostats on incubators, including ours, it's a precise thing that measures the temperature at some point, in our case, the heat plate. That heat plate is either on or off. And all of these incubators, the heat source is either going to be on or it's off. And so there's going to be some time that you're going to see the temperature as the heat plate goes off. You know, 15 to 10 seconds later, you'll see the temperature dropping back down. It has to go at some predetermined amount, and ours is about half a degree before it kicks back on again, the temperature comes back up and then it gets to the target temperature, it turns the heat plate off and it still climbs a little bit. So basically what you're going to see is you're going to see a temperature that is doing this and that is fine. The puppies will not feel it at all. You won't feel it, you don't feel it in your house, but it is actually happening. So just be aware of the fact that don't get in a panic because you set the thing to 38 degrees centigrade, and you see it going up between you know, 37 and, and, and maybe 40. That's quite normal, and any incubator that you see is going to see some fluctuation going on. It doesn't mean the things will not working properly. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.